What's up guys, Lightning Caller here and welcome to a game called Sounds of Her Love. So this is a dating sim where we can only date this girl. Or not date her, it's our choice. Anyway, let's hop into this and find out just exactly what the Please enter a character name. Fourteen characters long. We go with the name I go for everything. Ark. Let's do it. Something is ringing. Why won't it stop? My hand limply reaches out towards the noise, but I can't seem to locate it. Ugh. Must be around here somewhere. I sense something rigid at my fingertips. Suddenly, I hear a loud crash beside me. The ringing stops. Ugh. Force myself upright, an intense light greets my eyes. Beside me stands a hazy figure I can't make out. Do you mind not making so much noise in the morning? Your sister is still asleep. As my eyes adjust to light, I see my mother standing beside me. I look downward and see my table lying on the floor. My alarm clock just next to it, broken into pieces. I'm not cleaning that up. Just get ready for school and come downstairs. I made breakfast. My mother walks off. I don't think she's particularly happy. Well, I doubt many parents would do with their children creating such a ruckus. So it wasn't my fault. I was half asleep for crying out loud. I pry myself away from the bed sheets and pick up the table and the broken alarm clock off the floor. I check with the clock once read and conclude it's almost 7 a.m. Unfortunately, today is a Monday, so it's back to school with me. Although it's cliche, I'm not really looking forward to it. It's not, it's that I, it's that I dislike it, but you think after transferring here, things would have been a lot more lively. It's that I dislike it. Is it not that I dislike it? I think they're missing a word there. So far, nothing out of the ordinary has happened. Though I can't really expect life to be like that. This isn't a manga after all. I'm really doing mostly this kind of stuff because Dragon Ball Z Kakarot I can't do at the moment. I'm going to try and record that every day, but no guarantees anymore. Don't Call of Legends really nothing for me to do, and the Rising Shield is going to take a few days to actually get all the materials needed so we can continue our next video. So, I'm going to be to play some other games just in between the four series I kind of have going on. But I can't really expect life to be like that. This isn't a manga after all. I mean that. Open my drawers. I pull out my uniform. It's still as good as new. I haven't had much time to wear it. And I've only been here a week. For an international school, the uniform is quite generic. I was expecting something more prestigious. I guess this is still Japan after all. Even though I lived here all my life, my mother was dead. So i sending me here. She's not a native, so she at least wanted me to connect with her side of the family. Despite her premise that getting in touch with my Angelian, Angelian heritage was a good idea. The school isn't even English. It's Welsh. To be honest, I probably butchered that. I'm pretty sure that's the country north of England. I don't think there's much, there's much difference anyway. After I finish doing my blazer, I hear a shout from downstairs. Son, your breakfast will go cold at this rate. You may as well let me have yours if you're going to waste it. Let us sigh, I close the door to my room and head to join my parents. Reaching the dining room, I hear mother and father greet me with warm smiles. Maybe not so much my mother. I still think she's pretty pissed. My father gives an empty chair a hearty slap, still smiling all the while. Sit down, my son. We have a hefty back breakfast your mother would approve of. Of course I would. I made it after all. In front of me sits a traditional English breakfast, egg, toast, beans, sausages, and the like. I don't think you need all of this. The empty chair was put up from beside me. I guess my sister finally woke up. When it comes to the morning, she's not very talkative. Oh no, it's weird to say the least. I'm sure she'll find later though. Ah yes, my beautiful family has gathered at last. My second knowledge is my father with a quick glance and starts to eat breakfast in silence. Tell me, Ark, how are your studies? Was that hefty fee worth it? The school is private and teaches a foreign curriculum, so tuition fees are quite large. Luckily, my father can pay for it, and it's ready for my final year. It's going okay. The initial buzz of it wore after the third day. I guess like a normal school, not much different than ones here in Japan. I did not experience at traditional Japanese high school, <laughs> but due to our relocation to Tokyo, I had to transfer. If there's one person present, it's the students. Most of them are natives, and a lot more are quite full of themselves. Even I'm only half Japanese. Really? How much for a normal school? What was the point of that fee then? You want to send out the message education puzzle, right? That needs close to my side of the family. 
Reasonable? Tell me this though, son. Have you been speaking to any girls at least? Are you really asking him that? Both my parents are getting into stare off. Things like this happen all the time. For them, there's only a bit of a banter. Checking the clock on the wall, I realize I'm preparing the schedule. I give my family a fair word and head towards the door. Wait, that clock is... I hear my sister say something just as I leave, though she doesn't chase after me and tell me. It was strange to hear her at this time of day, but I guess I can't fret about it now. I continue on a journey I'm already just getting used to. The street leading to the school is pretty empty. Only a couple of locals are walking up and up by the num and my and the number of streets is quite low. Check on my watch. I realized I had left considerably early. I got I guess the clock at home was a bit fast. A faint noise distracts me from my wrist. <gasps> Ahead of me is a female student, presumably from my school. Pick up the contents of a bag off the floor. I guess she dropped it. I can to help you, but by the time I move my feet towards her, she has already finished and continued onwards to school. She draws the back of her head and her braids away softly in the wind. Blow softly? In the wind? Yes, the game has voice acting by this girl. By the, by the voice actor of this girl and this girl only. Just as I pass where she was standing, I notice a small car on the floor. Instinctively, I pick it up. In my hand is a library card with what I assume to be her name on it. Swedwin. I'm sorry, I probably butchered that. Because this is a Welsh school, I guess it's the origin of her name. I look up, and she is nowhere in sight. Oh, crap. Quickly setting myself off, I went towards the entrance of the school. I just hope I can catch up to her. It doesn't take me long to get her in my sight. I call out to her. Swarden! Swarden! You dropped this! I'm going to butcher this the entire video. The, the entire video. And future videos of this game. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Spending towards her, I'm flustered, and I approach her with a ragged breath. Here you go. Thank, Thank you. you. She gives me a shy response as I hand her back the card. How did you know my name? Okay, I need to turn the volume because I could not hear anything. I'm pretty sure she's going to talk there. It doesn't look like she's very comfortable with talking to me. It's on the card. Oh. It's pronounced Carrie. Like a K. Sorry, my bad. D don't worry. Carrie still looks rather uneasy. I guess we were just on that fluent socializing with others. Well... It's a good thing you got it back. We well, pretty early, so it would have taken a while for someone else to find it. Rather, right they probably would have given it into the lost and found. Thank you. She thanks me again, and her eyes are avoided, slightly away from my direction. This card is important to me. Maybe put it in a safer place. You wouldn't risk losing it then. I know I don't have the right to tell her what to do with the stuff, but things like this are common sense. I use it a lot. It's easier for me to reach it quickly. Oh yeah, she's an avid book fan. She must be quite smart. That or she just likes books. I decided to continue the conversation. What sort of books are you interested in? I guess everyone needs a hobby. So, between these two, one's gonna go bad, one's gonna go good. So, we're gonna go with... So, what sort of books are you interested in? You wanna know what she's interested in? And say, I guess everyone needs a hobby. I find between them, between them, this is more, like, nicer than just saying, guess everyone needs a hobby. So, what sort of books are you interested in? Fiction or non-fiction? I read a variety. Well, that was a short answer. I w want to study literature. She looks at me as she's supposed to be a big little her, though I can completely deny her expectations. Sounds great. It's good to have something you're passionate about. Well, let's move. I guess she can't stop herself from smiling. 
Move my feet again, I set off towards the entrance school, turning around to face Carrie before I make any sufficient progress. It's too early, but we should still go to class. It's a bit cold, after all. You're right. I need to check what class I'm in. She doesn't know what class she's in? School started a week ago. Don't tell me she has amnesia. Carrie slightly passes me and heads towards school, and I follow suit, heading towards my class. I guess she was a pretty interesting person. Class are well in the way, and the class is filled with a wise presence of lethargy. It is a Monday, after all, and lunch is just around the corner. Does anyone really want to learn about the structure of the inner monocathedral membrane right before lunch? I lean back in my chair and stare down at my notes, which are just a little more than scribbles on a sparse page. In the end, I can't really say I expected anything different when transfer. After all, the base principle is teaching all the same wherever you are. There's no reason as to why the school would be any different. Through the extra lane Russians are a pain in the ass. With just a little small but definitely noticeable yawn, the teacher glares sharply in my direction. Bored, are you, Ark? No, sir. Oh, that's a surprise. How about you answer the question at the bottom of page 3, then? I look at the closed book on my desk and realize what the teacher is referring to. I definitely had done a good job of pretending to work. Still, I oblige and turn this to page 3. Move my eyes towards the bottom of the page. I find a question. That's somewhat relative to what I managed to hear during the lesson. What is the space between the two mitochondrial membrane called? Is that the matrix? No, that's the bit inside. Well, boy, do you have an answer? Mitochondrial gap, intermembrane space, or refuse to answer. I have never taken psychology for a while. And it's between the two it's the space between the two mitochondrial Oh god <laughs> I don't know I don't want to refuse to answer If I could save I would but th this is gone at the bottom of the page But the space between them, so I feel like it wouldn't be inner, in the inter. I feel like it's inner, but it's, it's space in it. Oh god, um. <laughs> I'm gonna go with mitochondrial gap? I honestly don't know the answer. The safest spot would be to call it the mitochondrial gap. I mean, it's the gap between two of them, right? Sure, that must be it. Is it the mitochondrial gap, sir? I have a few sneers from the more super, super kids members of the class, but most of them do know my answer. I guess I was wrong then. How about you pay more attention in class next time then, huh? Damn it! When he goes back to the diagram he was drawing in the chalkboard, before the entire first started though, which I know that it seems pretty odd that the school is still using chalkboards. I lean back in my chair again, this time I'm going to do a better job and make myself look like a hard work student. At least, for this subject. Class end quickly ends, and I quickly make it past the sudden rush to exit the room. The after in the corner engulfs me, and the room makes a dash to the here. I want to play this again, but be like a looter to see if there's di a bad ending and a good ending, and to see if there's different bad endings depending on what you choose. So we'll get it right next time. We will. Chatter radiates from the swatches of people in the cafeteria. I read my way through those standing around and people walking the opposite direction. The line is long as always. Unlike most schools, the food here is actually quite good, so naturally it's in high demand. I join this choir of students left famished by the morning lesson. Time slows and the line slowly inches forward. Or oh, this is a sandwich. I don't think there's actually a lunch period in college, at least in my college, 
My college was if you have time in making classes, that's your chance to eat. Or before classes, depending on when your class is. All I know is that you should class the night lunch at my high school be at my college because I had time in between because I had like a few hours in between like all my classes. So I had time to get something to eat in high school or in college, but I know this is high school, I'm pretty sure. Most I feel like most animes uh animes or games that have like dating if it's not like I feel like if I feel like if they go for like a school atmosphere, it's usually high school. I don't feel that like you should go elementary or college, so you go high. But yeah, I know mate. They're lush, aren't they? Mid hundreds of Welsh beef. That's what they say anyway. I find it hard to believe they would import that stuff to Japan just for this one school. I bet you I'm the one gazing at what's on offer at the counter. To be honest, that guy was right. The beef here sure is lush. It's quite a prestigious school. I buy a sandwich and stuff it into my bag. This place is quite packed. So I don't find a place to sit down. Well, it's kind of what I was gonna get. Just as I'm about to leave, I spot a table that's actually empty. Well, Omo, I know someone familiar eating by herself. Is that girl familiar? Carrie, wasn't it? I wonder if I should approach her. I hardly know her, but I kind of want to sit down. It's cold outside. We are going to approach her. You know what? I may as well approach her. She's alone, after all. I've been in that situation plenty of times in this past week. I know how it feels. Once my time, I made my way over to the table. Her silky braids gently rest by her sides, and like before, her braids only moved due to her actions. As I draw close, she takes notice of my presence and directs her head towards me. She doesn't say speak, but I plan on taking the initiative from the beginning. Hey, Carrie, it's me. Come on, I, I don't think I've ever got a chance to introduce myself. I try my best to avoid sounding nervous. Walk up to a girl sitting by herself, it's pretty noticeable to everyone else in the hall. My name is Hawk. Hello. Thanks for earlier. She's still pretty on edge. Perhaps I should just apologize to her and make a quick retreat. I'm sorry to walk up to you so suddenly. D don't worry. I don't normally have people to eat with. So I'm glad. She only stopped speaking after giving me a sigh of gratitude. Her cheeks turned a rosy shade of red, and she ducks her eyes away from me. I guess she's embarrassed. It did strike me as odd as to why she's alone. Aside from the lack of confidence, she seems like a fairly nice person. I had an illness. She goes straight on to why she's so alone. I never asked her, but I'm glad she thinks of me as close enough to to explain it to me, even though we've just met. No, given that she seems so interested, maybe I'm the only person that is. For a while, I was immobilized. As recently as last week. Is that why she told me that she needed to find out what class she was in? Her face continued to grow to deeper shades of red. Maybe she was with her to ease her exploration. Though it's past me, I don't know if I actually help. I can understand. I guess I'm new here, so I don't really have anyone to eat with. It's not really as later, but as I noticed, though. I kind of got opening my mouth. Hers, though, continued you moving as her lips gently let out her on. Stay with speech patterns. Uh, I've been here since last year. That's actually a pretty sad thought. If she's been here this long, how come she's just alone? Even with it known it, you expect a friend would still speak to her afterwards. No, I make assumptions. Well, I know she could be a good friend of the class, but that just doesn't eat in school or is absent. My gut feeling goes by full occlusion in spite of that idea. She dug in towards the hair at the tip of her braid nervously during the lay during the lay time of our conversation. I can't really think of any say, so I decided something instead. <laughs> it's bored, but I 
pay or a sheet of paper from one of my books and scribble my phone number on it. If you ever need anyone to keep you company, then you can call me anytime or see me around school. Just say hi. I don't should do either anyway. To downplay forwardness of my action, I think of the cheesiest quote I can find and continue speaking. Birds of a feather flock together. You're giving me your number? No, her voice is quiet and still said she's a bit shaken up. I thought giving it would be acceptable in this day and age. People are probably dependent on their phones now. Still, giving your number to someone in the opposite sex would probably remain direct for years to come. Thank you. For some reason, she thanks me. Her pair of fingers reach out towards her bag and she gently takes out a rather pink and cute looking phone. I didn't know anyone still used phone straps, but a daffodil charm swings in the air as she enters my number. Her body slightly shaking all the while. You're the first in the non relative section. Finish her sentence with a smile. She gave me. I smile back, of course, which in itself it takes me a bit of courage, but I was quickly darted away to break our state of eye contact. She goes red again, and her mouth is slightly ajar, leaving her lips to glisten as the sunlight enters from the windows beside us. The child of the bell resonates throughout the room, and it's time to get prepared to go to class again. Carrie stands and shyly looks towards me, expecting me to say something, which, like her, I do. I enjoy speaking her, even if she doesn't say very much. Like I said, feel free to contact me anytime. And right now, I guess we should head back to class. Okay. She tries along by my side, slightly behind me. Probably keep her bushy face hidden, I guess. She seems to have a habit of going red. We part ways when I reach my classroom, with her giving me a hearty arm of farewell once we do. The wooden chair behind my back is rigid and sticks into me, causing a slight discomfort. My eyes dart across the pages before me, looking for any information that can make my life easier. I hate homework. Words echo around the room as I speak solemnly to myself. I thought that it would be easier to just copy the answers straight from the textbook, but apparently they're not here. With heavy workload, however, it does seem to compensate for the rather tranquil day at school. I did meet someone interesting, though. The blossom of my rose on her cheeks, her silky golden hair, and her hushed voice. Carrie's presence would be minuscule by many, but I can't get her off my mind. Ah, oh, dinner's almost ready. Calls from my mother reach my ear as I just about give up on my homework. It's not due for another week anyway, so I close the book and half holly toss it back on the shelf. The smell of cooking guides my way towards my door, but just as I'm about to leave my room, something stops me. My cell phone chimes, and my mind slightly on my desk, leaving me to consider who might be calling. If you ever need anyone to keep you company, then you can call me anytime, or if you see me on school, just say hi. That's right, I gave Carrie my number, didn't I? I was really expecting her to call me, but I guess she was probably checking that she wasn't giving a Fake number as a joke. I wasn't giving her a fake number. Oh, are you coming? Are we down in a minute? Probably not a minute, but it shouldn't be that long. I might just tell Carrie to call you back. Please can do is answer the phone. So I guess I'm... Um, got something going on on Legends right now. Because Legends, um... Has a bunch of things going on. Um, not how well it was, but they have these bunch of things going on, and that they're doing. Um, they're actually doing it. Like they they do it every single week. They have something new. So um, yeah. So every week they have something new that you gotta do on Legends, like a new event, like every month. So. Dakota Crystal like summon tickets for the current summon right now. A new Gogeta and Chinampa, which I would definitely be summoning on camera for the Gogeta. And if we get him, hopefully the jump up, because I got almost 8,000 Chrono Crystals. And then maybe we'll get back to the May with the second year anniversary on uh, Legends. So. So like four months. <laughs> In four months we'll get back to this. Um Yeah. 
I'm only got like seven days left for this thing, so you know I need to get six thousand more than that, like four thousand. So I started about uh, two hundred thousand. Um, yeah, man, yeah. probably not a minute, but it shouldn't be long. I might just throw, okay, yeah. I picked the device from my desk and answered the call. Shh. Carrie breathes her th- breathes through the speaker, but her nose is order to appear, even though through a mobile call. Hello, Carrie? Hello. I wanted to see if you'd answer. And that's what I was expecting. Carrie's voice seems a lot clearer, and the nervousness I once had. I had one's horn is pretty much gone. Is it because she didn't speak to me in person? Of course an answer. I gave you my number, didn't I? You did. Thank you. You didn't think it was a fake, did you? <laughs> I tease her about it. To be honest, if she gave me your number, I would I'd probably think it was fake too. That is, if she wasn't so timid anyway. Plus I was different, she would probably be pretty popular. Don't worry, I'm only teasing. Oh. Seeing the girl I just met seems pretty abnormal, but I can't deny her parts with that adorable. You seem fairly relaxed. I call out on the contrast of her speech pattern. I already know the answer, but I just wanted to show her that she can speak to people clearly if she just tries. I find it easier speaking to people over the phone. I'm sorry if it seems rude. No, no, it's fine. I call my father a lot. She didn't say it was her first non-relative contact. I really wanted to speak to you. The start is up again. The cause of her calling someone from school is still probably quite foreign to her. Oh, your dinner will go cold at this rate. I get a shout from the dining room. By now, my family is probably start eating without me. It's quite a tradition now, so I'm to together. I have to tell Carrie to call me back. I like to speak to you too, but do you think you can call me back probably about half an hour? My dinner is ready, and my mother is being quite persistent about it. Oh. Okay. So you sound a bit strict about it. But it's nothing I can do. My mother is quite strict at times, and she'll probably scold me for ignoring them if I don't go now. I can't have been temporary for hours, and I head downstairs, leaving the phone on my desk. And a woman smell hits my nose as I enter the dining room. The person has a look in my direction. It seems like family will to the mirror. Father said, join us, brother. Mother says it gives me a cheeky remark as I pull out the chair next to her and sit down to feast upon my now lukewarm meal. I'm too lazy to microwave it. How was school? You went an hour early, didn't you? You knew about that? I didn't tell you the clock was broken before you left. Oh, so that's what she was trying to tell me. She probably called me before I left. I was out the door at that point. Well, that's your school is good for you, but I don't tell about it next time. My father lets out an exorbitant laugh to continue eating. I don't think it is that no matter what time I get to school, classes don't start until the schedule too. In retrospect, I did get something out of going to school every day. I want to admit it's carry on the way. Now in my head, have you met any thick girls? I asked you at breakfast, I didn't hear your response. That's because it was a stupid question. I know my father mentioned before. My mother joins the conversation. Patrick can give him the answer. He won't stop asking me otherwise. This one only. No, I am a computer for that sort of thing. We know if there is someone. I should have carried somewhat print of it, at least in a sense. I haven't even known her for more than a day, and I'm talking over the phone. I can't deny I find her cute, attractive, Ian, but I don't think this is the time or place to be thinking about that sort of thing. Tell my father about her doesn't seem like a good idea in the slightest. Don't worry, son. That face is the only answer I would need. Look on it, your face. I know what it means. Go get her, son. My father gives me a thumbs up from across the table, and my mother bats him a scorn for expression. He's not a pub like you. Don't you have to listen? Don't, you don't have to listen to him, Mark. A clean plate sits in front of me, and I finish up the remnants of my meal. I want to even cook so I don't have to face any more questions my father might conjure up. I stand up my chair and move to the sink to quickly wash my dish. The thought of Carrie lingers in my mind as I leave the room and make my way step by step up the stairs. It's not a reason, but it's just that I could end up in that sort of relationship with her. There's no sign of her having any friends inside of myself, and she is pretty attractive, to be honest. In my mind, I wonder, like, this isn't good. It's too early to think about developing my relationship with her. We only just met this morning. On the topic of Carrie, I need to call her back in a minute. Waiting for her to call is in, uh, as it isn't an efficient use of time. Swinging it open, the door to my room creases the enter. My eyes shift towards my desk, and I reach out for my phone. Okay, guys, so I'm going to 
stop it here. If you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to click that like button. Also, if you haven't done so already, click the subscribe button and join the Pride Army today. And I'll see you guys on the next video. Thank you so much for watching. Bye, guys.